I just finished the video called America and Freedom. I'm starting to cry a little bit, a little bit now because I feel so strongly about this. I, when I was a kid, I really believed in the Ameri American ideals. And I was telling Alexandra that when I go around the world and I see the influence that America has, and she, she picked up on this again right away. She said, the movies, the music, the media. America has so much influence around the world. It's like Obama's wife said, or Obama said, the world is watching what America does. What America does matters to the whole world. The, America is by far the single most powerful country or society that has ever existed on this planet. What's so frustrating, so sad to me is how they're using their power and influence. Take just one example. There's so many examples, but I'll, okay, let's take a couple examples. One, Coca-Cola. Number two, the military. First, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola goes around the world not because they care about the people in those countries, but because they want to sell Coke. Now just a little lesson on investing. If you don't know anything about the stock market, I'll just give you a short lesson. People who invest in Coca-Cola are called the shareholders. The shareholders basically run Coca-Cola. They vote. They vote on who is the president and the chairman of the board of Coca-Cola. The people who are the investors, they care about money. They care about short-term profits, also known as quarterly profits. Every quarter, every three months, they Coca-Cola, like all big U.S. corporations, show their profits to the shareholders. The shareholders will quickly take their money out of one company and put it in another company if, it, if they're not getting the returns that they want. If they're not making enough money fast enough, in other words. So the people at Coca-Cola are... They have to think about making money because that's what their job is. They're getting paid to think about money to make money quickly for the investors. Now, you only invest in Coca-Cola stock if you have enough extra money to invest in something. The, the gypsies in Romania, I can tell you for sure, the ones that I've been talking to, I don't mean the rich gypsies, but the, the poor gypsies, the ones that don't have running water in their homes, the ones that can't read and, can't read and can't write, um, they don't have any extra money to invest. So we're talking about people that already have so much money, they have extra money just to invest, to make more money. So this is the way it is for a lot of Americans. They, they're making enough money to eat. They're making enough money to send their kids to universities. They're sending, they're, they have enough money to, to travel. They still have money left over, so they invested in companies like Coca-Cola. Now what does Coca-Cola do with their money? They go around the world marketing a needless product. Coca-Cola is a needless product. We do not need to drink Coca-Cola. A child doesn't need Coca-Cola to live. No one needs Coca-Cola to live. They're marketing, and they're ver marketing very successfully, a needless product. They have come over to Romania, for example. It's just one example. There are Coca-Cola advertisements all over. I'm looking at one right now. I can, s I can tell you right now, where I'm sitting, I can see one Coca-Cola vending machine, two Coca-Cola vending machines, three Coca-Cola machines or actually not vending machines but refrigerators inside these stores at the food court. I'll just see if I can show you. From the uh, from that far away but actually now as I look at it there's a fast food Chinese restaurant that has Coca-Cola refrigerator. There's the next one has a Coca-Cola refrigerator. The next one has a Coca-Cola refrigerator. The next one is a coffee place that I don't see any Coke signs for. The next one is another fast food place. And I can see, I can't see the refrigerator, but I can see Coca-Cola ads. So I'm guessing there's a refrigerator hidden behind one of the columns. So anyhow, If the people that had extra money would invest in, let's say, not something to make more money, but if they would invest in, let's say, libraries for poor countries, libraries for the Arab countries, where instead of trying to... Now, this, will, this ties into the military. If the Americans would invest their money not in nuclear weapons, bombs, 
training soldiers, but instead in building libraries, for example, in developing volunteer programs and sending people and Alexander and I talked Alexander and I talked about this also. If the United States would spend more money in foreign exchange programs, so all the young people in America would instead of being forced to go to the American public high schools, why not force the kids to go spend a year in another country, or maybe a month in 12 different countries, or maybe a month in 24 different countries? I think this would be much better for the world. So my question is, are the Americans interested in what's good for the world? Obama was talking in one of his videos about how, I think he said something about how, like killing people, that's not who we are as Americans. Well, I'd like to raise that up one level higher and have Obama stop thinking about just what Americans are, but what are humans? What does it mean to be a human? Not just what does it mean to be an American? Because I agree with Obama that it doesn't... An American, to me, is not a person who goes around killing people, blowing up their buildings, forcing them to believe what Americans believe, imposing their values on them. But instead, to me, America is a country which could be a country which goes around the world helping people. And by the way, I don't think I've said this in any videos before, but I'll say it now. Canada has a reputation in most countries as being a country which helps other countries. When Canadian volunteers go into a country, they're usually not hated. Canadian embassies don't have to spend near the amount of money on protecting their buildings from being blown up. Why? Because, obviously, because not as many people hate the Canadians. Why? Why is that? Our Canadians... George Bush said something completely, well, I won't even label it, but he said something like, uh, the terrorists hate us because we are free. Well, wait a minute, George. Is America any more free than Canada? Why don't the terrorists blow up the Canadian embassies? Why don't the terrorists want to kill Canadians? Well, there's a real reason for that, George. It's not just your propaganda to make the Americans afraid so they'll vote for you twice as they did. You're fear propaganda worked. It got you elected twice. But hopefully now the American people are starting to wake up. And they're starting to see that there's perhaps another cause and effect relationship other than your very uh, shallow politically based and I would say personally based reason for say the 9-11 attacks. I'll just give a little more free advertising for Obama here. That he's definitely a more intelligent person than George Bush. I hope the Americans elect someone intelligent like Obama, or actually Obama this time, because the only two choices are a Republican and Obama. So, not too impressed with McCain. So, this is my little political speech for Obama, even though it didn't start out to be that way. And by the way, in Europe, if you were to take a poll of the Europeans, you would find that the vast majority would be voting for Obama. So, those of you in America, please pay a little attention to what's happening over here in Europe. Thanks. Bye. Oh, wait. Before I leave, also, I'd like to say that the European Union is spending an awful lot of money in doing a lot of smart things. And they are also spending money on weapons, but they're also doing spending a lot of money on things like exchange programs, on developing, really developing communities instead of blowing them up. Yes, I, I'm exaggerating and being a little dramatic and maybe overgeneralizing, but that's because I feel quite strongly about this. Now I feel better. Bye.